Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I'm Father Christmas. I'm the Father Christmas of Shorts and Shots <laughs> on RTTV. Hi, guys. I'm Elio with the Flow. You know how we do it on Shorts and Shots on RTTV. And I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas. Now, we bring you young directors, young, innovative, interesting directors that have uh, worked hard to make short films. Yes, so uh, we have another young, innovative director in the house. Uh, you'll be meeting, I shouldn't tell you for the first meeting. But you know, stick around guys, because it's just a shot on our two TV. My name is Tulu Ajayi, and you're watching Short in Short. My name is Emma Edosio. I am a cinematographer and a director. I currently run my production company called Bliss Productions Limited. And um, that's pretty much about me. Growing up was amazing. Um, I'm from a family of seven kids and my mom kept giving birth to kids every year. And we, we out of, we're seven and we all look like twins and triplets and we're running around the house causing a lot of trouble and it was amazing growing up. Um, I'd always been the crazy one in the family. I would get up and say I'm going to school, to film school and I would go. And at first my mom, I, I grew up in a family where one boy, six girls, and my mom was like, she's a hawk around the girl. It was a privilege to be around the Adosio girls. If you were a guy, you come into my house, I mean, you know, it was a privilege to come and my mom, we have beautiful girls in my house and yeah. And um, so my mom was a hawk. She was amazing, amazing, amazing. And then even while in the university, she would come to see my lecturers, check my book work to make sure I was in school. So I grew up in that kind of shielded family where you had your life, you know, everybody knew what they wanted to be. There were doctors, lawyers, no, 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 there were doctors. Everybody, we're all in science class engineers you know we had our path and I just woke up and I said I didn't want to do it and my mom was crazy you mean you mean you want to be a cameraman after six years in the university and then I remember it was after university and she locked me in the house and said I wasn't going anywhere I came back from a shoot I was working with Hip TV then and it was this all night and I came back 10 o'clock in the night she was crazy she was waiting for me in front of the house and she was crazy I was like where the f have you been you're not going anywhere that job you're going to stop it and I stopped and the next week they released an article about me in the newspaper. I was like, eh, hey, okay. And that was where it started. I'm so happy that she approved of whatever, everything I, I, I started before she passed away. I make movies, I make documentaries, I make TV shows. Yes. I stumbled into filmmaking. Um, I studied computer science at Ola Bisiano Banjo University for six years. And there was a year where you're supposed to work as an intern in a company. And I went to this production, to this IT firm. And I'd crammed my way through school. And I sat in the interview and I remember clearly to the two directors brought out a pen and a paper and told me to write a very simple program and I was there so embarrassed fumbling with my pen and they said you mean you can't write this simple program go out of the office and then they called me back in and said they were going to train me but there and then I made up my mind that I wasn't going to I didn't want to do computer science because it, it would keep evolving and I, I really had no passion for computer science at all and I, I didn't want to get into that rat race of chasing C++ or evolving Java. And um, I remember that I liked watching Tolo Tolo and um, Senorita, and I was really curious about it. So I called up a very a, a mentor, Banjo, and told him that I wanted to I wanted to learn. And he hooked me up with a small production company called. 66 I mentioned and I started watching the editors and watching the cameramen and that was how it started for me. I've been into filmmaking for eight years now. It's three years after I started my company. I 
I always say this, I'm not going to be put in that box where I'm going to say, oh, the men were horrible. I've worked with some amazing people. Um, I wouldn't be here today if not for the men who believed in me. The film world is, is, is a lot of hard work. Forget the glamour, forget the glitz. It's a lot of hard work. So I, I don't think there's any separation. Oh, I'm a woman and a man. If there's work, do the work and you do it right and you earn your respect. The beginning is not always easy. I remember that I was not as glamorous as the presenters. I was, in fact, I had to, I had to, um, there was a phase I went through where I was the tomboy. Guys would come to me, oh, I'm on my guy, chop not cool, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, it was, it was a blessing in disguise in the sense that it took a lot of unwanted attention from me and they thought of me as their fellow set person and you know yet and it was hard that time where the vixens will be all glamorous and I'll be like this rugged girl with the camera behind and over time I evolved over time I had to evolve so people will take me serious as a business person the challenges with family it was hard for them to understand but they started getting they started understanding what I did and it was um, hard in the business because when you start there's a lot of sacrifice you have to make, make to be able to learn. Um, there's a lot of hard work you have to do. And it doesn't pay off in the beginning, but um, that period was one of the top time for me, but it gets better and it's getting better, basically. I sort of cut the bug and I realized that this is, I'm doing the right thing and I wanted, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I went to film school in 2011, 2012, and RUN was my final project. And I remember, because I studied in Michigan and half of the students wanted to shoot horror. And I'm African, I, I just couldn't get why you would want to stab someone to death 15 times and make fun out of it. So I, I decided that I wanted to do something African because it's, I've always wanted to tell African stories. So I said, okay, what, what is the perfect story? Um, get this politician's son to be kidnapped in Michigan. And I got my friend together and we wrote the script, Andre, and we wrote the script together. And um, he wrote, he's, he's African American. And he wrote the script and I had to take it and re-modify it to be like African. And um, so the next step was to look for Nigerians to act the movie. And I remember the audition. I, we, for, in my school, when they call out for audition, they, they put it out so the whole of Michigan comes for the audition. And I saw white guys coming to audition for black guys and or for Africans. And I remember me and my friends would sit down and be like, yeah, so you've come to audition for the part of Aki. And they're like, yeah, okay, so read the line. And they're like, you think you can get away with it? Like, what the hell? And we will laugh and we'll make fun and we'll be like, oh, we'll get, we'll get back to you. But like, yeah, man, we'll get back to you. My name is Tulu Ajayi and you're watching Short and Short. It took us about four days to make it um, it took us four days four days of um, stuffing everybody up with pizza and um, and um, Pepsi it took us four days to make the movie um, these were guys who had never acted before they were just pharmacy students students um, one of them just recently got married so you know it was it was working with one of the major challenges was working with fresh, new guys who had never acted before. Aside from that, I was blessed with guys, even though they had not worked together, they had never done anything on the film set. They were very, they wanted to learn, they wanted to act, they wanted to, they would show up early. So yeah, that was, that's, that's about that. Okay, I know the audience can be harsh, please. It was my first short film. 
I made better ones, so it'd be nice. But I hope they enjoy it. It was, it was a fun project. Everybody you see there, from Kin to um, Wale to Tari to everybody there, we just had fun. And I think that's the whole, person, the whole thing about movie making, just to come together, make stories, have fun, you know, laugh, as Zonto on set, and then scream at people and run from the police because we don't have a shooting permit and we're shooting a kidnap scene in the middle of the road, in the middle of a white neighborhood. <laughs> but I just hope that you like it and see the potentials in it. It's, it's still, how do I put it? You don't, every director didn't start with amazing movies. You, they grew into it and you know, be nice. And just enjoy the movie. That was Emma Modi Edosio. <sighs> fabulous. She is fabulous. Now, the most amazing part is the fact that she's a she. Because in the Nigerian movie industry, we don't have a lot of she's. You know, we do have, but then for a director, for a cinematographer, and she's worked her way to the top. She's, she's you know, climbing hard that ladder. And I know she's going to, you know, blow up super big one day. Uh, shout out to all the Delta ladies in the world. You guys are awesome. <laughs> or should I say, you ladies are awesome. Now, we're about to see her short film titled Run. So uh, do not run anywhere. Do not go anywhere. Because when we come back, we'll be talking about Emma Mode Edosio's short film Run. Check it out. dollars by Friday or else Toby loses a finger a day after that 10 million dollars are you mad where do you want me to find that kind of money yeah your father hello sir Toby you must deliver the money in person to the United States 10 million do you know who I am do you know what I can do do you know the power I have I will kill you myself in America. Of course I know your power. Oil man, senator, to use the African president like a puppet. Former general in the Nigerian army. Babatunde Wellington. You are a coward. Hiding behind the phone. Kidnapping my son. I am a jealous God. Punishing the children for the sins of the father to the third and fourth generation. Hey, baby. Your father is worried. You're foolish. My father will not come. You, you are a foolish boy. Your father is coming. Watch. Son. 
We have no leads, no traces, okay? What do you think this is, huh? CSI? Law and order? We don't triangulate phone calls. We don't go around knocking door to door looking for clues. We're real police. Do not patronize me, detective. Okay, calm down, calm down. Patronize? We're doing all we can. You're doing nothing. You're just sitting your ass down, asking me pointless questions, wasting my time. Wasting your time? Look, I'm out of here. Go. You're useless anyway. I will find myself myself. Fucking moron. Yeah, good luck with that one. Hey, pucker. What do you want? I kid, I'm I'm just messing with you. I'm all friendly. They've gone to the store, so I get to turn babysitter. You should let me go. I'll I'll pay you good money. Ah. Oh. Smoke? No. <laughs> I figured since you're gonna die and all, I I figured this would probably be a great time to start. All right, here's this. You sit here, and you look at this pipe, while I go up there and take the greatest shit of my life. And I want you to think about your mom and how you're never gonna see her pretty face again. Come on, don't feel bad. Yeah, don't feel bad. Now, I'm gonna untie you and I want you to enjoy yourself and the time that you have left. I guess I need to attend to her. Stay here, I'll be right back. Okay, fine. I have to go, okay.
Joseph. What makes a man a man? Is it the power to beat another man? A man must have love and compassion. And that's the weakness of a real man. Joseph, look at me. You're a pathetic traitor. Did you really think they were going to pay you? Abo Shiri. Oh, yeah, where's Toby? Uncle, where is the money? I want to be a director who is flexible. I want to be a director who I, I don't think I don't think I want to be described based on my style, but I want to be described based on how my movies would affect people. I want people to see my movies and be like, wow. I think that's like that's like the, the cocoa for direct for directors. So um, I want to because you can tell you can tell a story with horrible camera work, but it's telling the stories that matter. So I think I want to be I don't want to be known by my style, but I want to be known by the fact that she she has the ability to interpret. Um, she has the ability to tell stories. She has the ability to her her movies stand out because they they get you thinking because they get you they touch some part of your life you know probably your childhood, probably something. And I think that in Africa, we have those kind of stories. And it's just that we, we need to find them and you know, tell them right. I want to be known as that kind of director, basically. Yeah, yeah in the next, by next year, I, should, um, I plan to make two of my own movies and a lot more. Um, I hope that there are a lot more opportunities to make movies coming because um, I think movie making is I think I, I would say it's a big responsibility because, um, you know, you're, you're not only giving the, it, it's, it's a power to, you ha you're giving a huge, huge power to sort of tweak with people's minds. And um, I hope that that opportunity a lot more comes by next year. But I have two movies up on my sleeves or under my sleeves or anywhere near my sleeves or whatever for next year. Yes, my YouTube channel is my name, Emma De Edosio. So you can find me up there and um, follow me up on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. But be nice. Don't put porn on my wall. Thank you. So I want to give a Christmas message to my mommy and my daddy, Chief Estos Edosio, and my uncle, Uncle Bright, and my brother and my sister, Edoka. Eloho, Edafe, Uyoyo, and my Merry Christmas, everybody. Hi, guys. What's up? Okay, I'll be nice. I'm going to be like a girl. Hi, everyone. Um, 
My name is Emma Edosio and I am a director and keep watching Shorts in Short. Don't touch that dial. There are no more dials on TV. Don't touch that remote control. Don't flip that DSTV control. Just stay tuned and you'll have fun. Okay, <laughs> okay. So that was Ron. Now, uh, for a split second there, while, while you're watching the film, you almost want to scream Ron. Like in the beginning when the boy, you know, got kidnapped. And you're like, Ron! Or when he escaped, uh, when the white dude released him and told him to smoke, you know, the crack and he ran out of the house and you expect him to just take off, you know? Yeah, so there are so many parts in the film that you just want to scream, run! So I, I think it's a good title. Now, uh, that was Run. Uh, you know how we do it on Shorts and Shorts. You can uh, comment on the short film on our Facebook platform, uh, my r 2 tv On Twitter, it's at r 2 tv On Instagram, it's r2tv. And our webpage is www.wearoofttv.com. You can also follow Emma. Yeah, she gave you all her um, social media platforms, the way you can follow her. And you can follow me on Twitter, it's at masterbanks. On Instagram, it's at masterbanks. And on Facebook, it's Shady Bats. Now, uh, that's all we can take today on Shorts and Shorts. But do not forget, guys, Shots and Shots is all about directors, all about short movies, and we're bringing it to you fresh from our TV where entertainment is at its best. So till I come your way again, I'm Ilo with the flow, and I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Ciao! Ho, ho, ho!